Darth Vader's mask ever kind of fogs up in the lenses, like when I breathe in this. It's actually kind of hard to breathe in, which is ironic when you think about it. This show is just right up my alley so far. For the first minute or so, no spoilers. I thought this was a fantastic episode that pushes things further uh, about what I like about the series. Still have a couple concerns, but some concerns I had before are actually calmed after this. Uh, but I'm more curious now than anything. So go watch the episode for yourself and come right back because right now we're gonna talk about spoilers. So spoiler warning, spoiler log is coming. Spoiler talk, spoiler discussion, whatever you want to call it. Leave. All right, so for spoilers. I think we just need to go ahead and get out of the way that Darth Vader's appearance here is pretty much perfect. The way he's handled, he's menacing in every shot. He moves like a robot ninja. The way he just stalks Kenobi in the shadows is so well done, is so atmospheric. It gave me chills. In fact, their entire confrontation did. I've seen some people online complain that it was a little anticlimactic, that there should have been more. I don't agree. I think we can pretty much assume that they're gonna face off again before the series is over. That was rumored for a long time. So for a first meeting, after a decade, this was everything I needed. When Kenobi first senses Anakin, he's terrified, petrified. Not only by fear of who Vader is, but fear of confronting what he did in crippling Anakin, helping him fall to the dark side and become Darth Vader. And we also know that Kenobi, just based on visual clues and some of Leia's dialogue, that he's kind of cut himself off from the Force. Maybe not completely, because he still talks with Qui-Gon, who I think we're gonna see soon, more on that later. But he also hasn't trained in 10 years. And then Vader, with one hand, because sabers are usually two hands, with one hand effortlessly beats him. And he even says, your isolation has made you weak or the years have made you weak or something along those lines. So he gets his butt handed to him. And some things that we know about Kenobi from Star Wars or is he, he is a defensive fighter. In the episode three novelization, it talks about he's the Suresu master, which is form three, the defensive form of fighting. But also that Obi-Wan can become one with the force in a stronger way than most Jedi ever could hope or dream of. So my theory right now is that Obi-Wan, after losing to Vader and being poetically burned by Vader, golly, that was powerful. That was powerful. From this, they'll retreat, retreat and regroup, and he will talk and commune with Qui-Gon, who we will see in some way, shape, or form. I just believe it in my heart. And he will find a new hope in the Force again and really train, maybe not train, but kind of rediscover his skills and come back and he'll be able to beat Vader this next time, or at least to a draw. And I think we'll see that in the finale. So be patient, it's coming. I thought it was great. Vader just walking through and callously murdering, murdering people for a couple of different reasons. One, really for no reason at all, because he can. Two, to kind of draw out Kenobi, because the Jedi code is like an itch and they wanna help people. Also, I think because those people were just scared of him staring at him and Vader wanted to prove a point. It's dark, it's hard to watch, it's everything Darth Vader should be at this point in his life. I thought the lightsaber combat was restrained enough for the first fight, but also kind of a nice balance between the original trilogy and the prequels. I'm hoping to see a little bit more uh, as we go on, but I thought it was great for a first moment and visually it was stunning. I personally think Deborah Chow is doing a fantastic job directing the series. I really like what she does visually and I'm excited to see what she has in store next for us. I wanna take a moment to reflect on what Moses Ingram, who plays uh, Reva, has been going through. Um, death threats, racism, sexism, horrible, horrible things being said to her online. And I don't want any part of that. And as a Christian, I reject those from my worldview. I demand better treatment of people. And sin causes horrible things in this world. I had my criticisms with Reva and with Moses Ingram's performance. That has nothing to do with how she is as a person or how she is as an actor, really. It has to do with the direction of her in the series. And in this episode, I thought she was much, much better. It just maybe took some time to getting used to, and I think ret retroactively I can go back and appreciate it more. Moses Ingram, for some reason you're watching this, we support you, we appreciate you, and we are here to see the rest of your story played out because you are playing a fascinating character who has me guessing every week.
I loved the mention of Quinlan Voss and other Jedi going through uh, that planet. I love that there is someone within the Empire helping uh, Jedi escape, as well as just seeing more of the Inquisitors. I, I really like Fifth Brother. I think he's just cool looking. Speaking of the Inquisitors, Grand Inquisitor is still being talked about like he's dead, and he better not be dead. But I have a small theory. In Star Wars Rebels, when he actually does die, he says, some fates are worse than death before letting himself die. So maybe he is dead and Vader did something to his body to bring him back. I'm just curious to see where it goes. I hope it's not too convoluted. Just hopefully he's just in a back to tank somewhere and he's alive. There were a couple parts where I wasn't quite sure what was going on in terms of the tunnel that Leia was running down. The lady Tala helping them leaves to go back to help Kenobi but that's after Reva enters the same way they went in. So maybe she took a different route out. They didn't really show it. And if so, how did Reva get ahead of Leia to kill that pilot that was gonna take him off planet? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's just a small nitpick kind of visually and like screen direction and maybe editing choices. Uh, I think a couple more shots may have done fix that little job. I thought it was particularly sweet when Leia asked Obi-Wan if he was her real father and how he knew so much about her birth and her mother and it was just a really touching moment followed by a pretty cool action scene with all those stormtroopers the one getting cut in half geez Obi-Wan has a penchant for that doesn't he I am super excited for next week and I can't wait to see where it goes this show has just been a, a treat so far I'm very very happy you'll hear me say this a lot going forward my motto is always look for the good and there's so much good to be had in this show so far.